All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Rotors on our how-to videos. Today, we're going to give you an idea of everything that is internally inside of your rotary engine. Um, if you've seen our last video of our teardown, a lot of these parts are directly from that engine, but I'm also going to compare some FC parts and RX-8 parts, whatever engine it is that you guys may be tearing down, give you an idea of what's in there. Um, of course, looking at the bench, you see that we brought out a stationary gear, bearings, old used bearings, not new, don't hold us to it, uh, oil pumps, two rotors, our dowels, our oil metering pump drive gear, or a distributor drive gear, drives both. <clears throat> we got 13B side seal and an Renesis side seal. We have a Renesis corner seal, Atkins corner seal, and a Mazda OEM corner seal to compare those. Side seal springs, we also got the FD and the FC corner seal springs to show you the difference between the two. We got apex seal springs and an assortment of apex seals just to give you guys an idea of what's out there, what you might experience, or what you may be looking to purchase for your build. Um, in the back there, brand new sets, ENJ RX-8 Apex Seals and ENJ Solid Corner Seals. We have Atkins Rotary Thermal Pellet and we have Mazda OEM as well. Um, now what we don't have on the table is Mazda OEM Water Jackets because the ones I was trying to show you guys they ripped and broke. Um, so we opened up a brand new set of Fast Tech water jackets, also sold by Goopy. Um, oil control rings, oil control ring springs, and also got a micrometer out to show you guys the differences between the side seals, and then our front counterweights, FD and FC. And then in these little baggies here are your O-rings, dowel O-ring, stationary gear O-ring, and then this one here is your tension bolt water seals. The oil metering pump or distributor drive gear. You got your needle bearing or your spacer, needle bearing spacer. Um, <clears throat> separation plate, you got a needle bearing on the bottom side and a needle bearing on the top side. Obviously your front e-shaft keyway. Now on the stationary gear, this is an FC Turbo 2 gear. Um, if you're tearing down your FD, it's pretty much going to look like this, except for on this lip here, you're going to have a flathead bolt or screw. What it does is, is it comes in and through one of the FD stationary gear bearing in one of these slots to hold it in place from spinning. Unlike the Turbo 2, it's notched. To stop it from spinning. Now, if you use an FD bearing on a Turbo 2 gear, it will spin. There's nothing to hold it because the gear does not have the notch. And the same with a Turbo 2 bearing, if you use it on an FD gear, nothing to hold it as well, it will spin. Now, there is a difference. This has it's multi-window, much more oil flow, a lot better with our Turbo 2 and NA. This is enclosed. Now your rotor bearings, they're all going to look the same between automatic, FD, FC. Um, when you purchase yours and order them, make sure it's year specific. Because um, I know FD bearings also work for manual RX-8s. And then the FC bearings work for automatic RX-8s. Um, your supplier should tell you exactly which bearing you're getting and when you get it new You'll have a paint indicator on the bearing somewhere to give you an idea of what color code it is and then you have your oil chain oil pump gear and then the e-shaft gear to drive the oil pump <clears throat> And now on your oil pumps you have an FD and you have an FC If you notice by the FD casting on the top is different from the FC. 
And the, the flow is also different as well. And then the volume and FD has this specifically opening. Now this one here sets in the stationary gear because the bearing here, you can't have your needle bearing writing on this. This is for the needle bearing to write on. Yes, this will move back and forth, that is okay. So pretty much it goes like this. Now the tapered end, get it. Yep. tapered end goes down. And then you got your needle bearing. You got two of these. This case is an FC. Needle bearing rides on that. And then of course, and then the plate. And then you're going to have another needle bearing right on top of this. Alice, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Now this one here sets in the stationary gear because the bearing here, you can't have your needle bearing writing on this. This is for the needle bearing to write on. Yes, this will move back and forth. That is okay. So pretty much it goes like this. Now the tapered end Taper it in, goes down. And then you got your needle bearing. You got two of these. This case is an FC. Needle bearing rides on that. And then of course, and then the plate. And then you're gonna have another needle bearing right on top of this. Okay. Ready? Alice, yeah. Okay. We got two dowels on the table. In this case, you're going to have four. Um, also, what's missing from the table, you might ask, where's the eccentric shaft? Well, if you have your one rotary in front of you and you tore it down, we would hope that you'd leave the centric shaft off to the side on a nice surface so it doesn't get ruined. And of course, your four dowels, off, those off to the side as well. Make sure you clean it all up. Um, and then our next video is going to be specking it. That's where you're going to see more on the E-shaft, a lot of specs, a lot of numbers on all the parts. Uh, but in this case, we've got two dowels on the table just to give you guys an idea. Okay, on the rotors, you're gonna notice these rotors do have rotor bearings in there. Also, the oil control rings are left in here as well. Um, we have oil control rings set out and a rotor without them, so we can show you guys that as well. And then on the letter stamp for the weight, it's on the gear side, about right here. This is a C weight. When you tear your engine apart, you wanna make sure your rotors are matched. If they're not, you can pair the rotors with a letter up or letter down. C with B, C with D, B with A, B with C. Um, <clears throat> and then now we're off to side seals. You have 12 of these. And we're also going to show you the RX-8 side seal. It is different from any other 13B on the side seals. We have 12 side seal springs, 12 corner seal springs. These are FD. Um, now the shape of it is the same as your RX-8. And then you have your FC corner seal springs, which are wired. Now I suggest switching those out to FD corner seal springs. Six apex seal springs, long ones. Six apex seal springs, the short ones. Now we have this extra one back here because 
This is a racing beat spring, which is specifically made for this racing beat one piece ceramic seal. Now if you notice, the racing beat spring, the racing beat apex seal cannot be used with your other apex seal springs. There is a length. So if you plan on using the racing beat ceramic seals, you need to use their springs. Now on the corner seals, this is a Mazda 13B. It has the rubber plug. Here it is with the rubber plug in it. The next to it is an Atkins solid corner seal. It is tapered on one side for heat dissipation to keep the heat off the seal and off the iron as much as possible. Now on the RX-8 corner seals, this is a Mazda OEM. And on the back side, you'll see that it has like a step lip. Now it has a metal plug that goes in to make it like a solid corner seal, like the Atkins, with the indention in to, for help, to help with heat dissipation. Um, they asked, so oh, why didn't Mazda make it like Atkins? I believe Atkins has a patent on their corner seal, and I think this was Mazda's way to get around it. Now on the side seal, on the RX-8, it's real thick on one end, thin on the other. It's tapered downward. Now on the 13B side seals, you have one end that's shiny, the other end is gonna be dull with like shiny steps, that's where the spring makes contact. Now if you sit these two together, a standard 13B and an RX-8, you can definitely tell that the RX-8 side seal is much thicker, a lot stronger than the standard 13B side seal. Okay, now the Apex seals, we have a Mazda 2mm 2-piece. Two then we have an RA Super Seal 2mm 2-piece. Two a Goopy 2mm 1-piece. A Goopy 3mm 1-piece. Now if you look at the difference between a 3mm and a 2mm, you can definitely tell one apex seal is much beefier. Yeah. Beefy. <laughs> mm. Then we have a three millimeter two piece. And then we have RX eight two millimeter two piece E and J and we have a standard 13B E and J solid corner seal. Now the E and J apex seals and the E and J solid corner seals are made out of the same material as the apex seals. E and J apex seals have not broken. Um, I don't think they've had a set break yet. They are also a softer seal. Um, they warp under detonation instead of shattering like Mazda OEM or Atkins when they hit hard detonation. You can warp them and lose compression if the detonation gets real bad. OEM thermal pellet is a two piece, heat activated to open for oil pressure. Two springs, exactly like this when you take it apart. And then the Atkins, it's just one spring. That's how it works. And then on the front counterweights, we have an FD and an FC, but on the needle bearings, you should be able to tell the difference between the two. And then also, if you have a bunch of counterweights and you don't know exactly what you have, you can flip them over to tell the difference between an FC and an FD is the machining on the top side. This is a step. This is more rounded. Okay, the O control ring springs. Now, when we do the reassembly, we're going to show you guys exactly how everything is going to go into place. But at this point, this is just a part breakdown. It's kind of self-explanatory. You're going to have eight rings, 
four rings per rotor and you're going to have four small ones and four large ones you can see here obviously the small ones are on the inside large ones on the outside on the oil control rings themselves you have one that the ring goes on the outside the other one the ring goes on the inside again two different sizes kind of self-explanatory with the springs one inner one outer okay now on the water jackets um, orange and black orange is inner black is outer now the orange ones are a silicone Viton ring and the black ones are strictly Viton now on a Mazda OEM ring these it isn't a full one cut ring like this it's actually joined together by a, a green compound and it also has Teflon on the outside on the inside on the orange and the black as well um, on our reassembly video I'm going to explain the Mazda OEM water jacket compared next to this we are going to use these for the rebuild video um, package of tension bolt seals and of course another package of your dowel o-rings your front cover teflon ring your stationary gear ring and your crank angle sensor o-ring and your front bolt o-ring as well as in this package okay and, um, well that concludes this video thanks for subscribing have a wonderful time